We leave Donegal now. The setting for Brian Friel's play, Translations, which had a huge effect on me. It's a play that explores the devastation and loss that affects generations when a mother tongue is taken away. I think about the crucial role that writers play in responding to social, political, and personal events that affect us all. Stephen James Smith describes this beautifully in his poem, Mother Tongue. We all try to triangulate ourselves in relation to something else. These days, Tommy and McConey in Akalukush Farliga, which means I live by the sea. Something too massive to comprehend, and with no fixed point, it can do away with certainty. Ambiguity is where the sea resides, good enough for this and us. North of where I live, I can make out Curacao Beach and the Raven Firth. Its name Raven comes from the Irish Rowan only because it sounds similar, but it means spade-shaped piece of land. Aren't we always digging for something? These sand dunes and lagoons are a protected area now. What's worth protecting? A nation should guard its language more than its territories to a surer barrier and more important frontier than a fortress or river. And in the winter, this area is home to the Greenland geese and other wading birds alongside Corsican pines and red squirrels. So maybe now you get a sense of where this Dubliner in exile is. I, I once felt Liverpool was in touching distance, but in the southeast, the sunny southeast, it's easier to reach Europe when the train to Rosslare passes your window several times a day and then we channel onwards to Bilbao, Brittany and beyond. Our roots branch off from other Indo-European languages with a source in Eurasia. You see, this island is not isolated. The sea and wind brings us places and secrets and a periphery perspective is a unique vantage point. Then again, feeling cornered can have its disadvantages. They say a language is a dialect with an army and navy. So why haven't the fighting Irish conquered the world? These old tropes die hard, and resistance isn't quite the same as fighting. What was there to resist? I heard it said, where there is ambiguity, let it be anglicized. Remember, ambiguity is where the sea resides. Ambiguity is where beauty is born. And in turn, a turn of phrase can be a thorn. And in some ways, that's what this island has become. But when your people are dying, communication is urgent and a language isn't outlawed for no reason. If you spoke to Kupla Fuckel, you'd be done for supposed treason. And in that cauldron, which is an old North French word, oral traditions and omic alphabets, Gaelic dialects, indigenous travel languages, mixed by the alchemy of saints and scholarly Shanachies to give us sinners and savages Hiberno-English etymologies, a hyphenated language fitting for these border times when we're trying to connect and disconnect. This land contains the memory of being yoked and unyoked. So we're on the sharp end of the history of Europe, embracing the Atlantic. In Gaelic, edge is Imel. And once you've found the edge of something, you can always try and find your place with edges. They change, like the sea. And over time, and through osmosis, we uncover what's important to us. And that's not really a physical thing. All any one of us can truly hope for is a sense of belonging. <laughs>